Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to show you how to build a sub-menu feature so that when you are building menu bars like this here on the left in your applications, uh, you can do something like this where you open up a primary menu option and then you see its sub-menu items and they can collapse uh, and expand like this so that you have a lot more flexibility and a more engaging UX design for your users. So here's how it works. Okay, so on my page on the left hand side here, I have a single group element that is going to uh, act as my menu bar and it's going to, I'm custom building it. So I have an icon here for the user's picture, their name there, and then these text elements, these are individual text elements uh, for each uh, menu option. Now this is going to be pretty straightforward. If Once you get the first um, sub-menu list, uh, you can just duplicate that and do it for the rest of the options there. So what I'm going to do is grab these four here and move this down a little bit because we need to make room for the sub-menu items for menu option one. This is the one that I'll be working with. So I will add a new group element here. This is going to be called sub-options uh, one. Okay, so I'm, what you're going to end up doing is creating a group menu for each of these options, right? So within this group, I will add a couple sub-menu uh, items. So we'll do sub-option one. And typically, you'll see these sub-menu items um, indented a little bit. So I have them shifted over to the right just a little bit. Uh, now, this group, one of the more important features that you want to have enabled, I'm going to move those down just a little bit more, um, you want to make sure that the collapsing behavior is active. So for the group element, scroll down on the property editor and you'll see this checkbox here for collapsing the element's height when hidden. You want to keep that checked so that when this is not visible, it collapses its height and everything below will be able to shift up. Right? So, by default, I want none of my sub-option list items to be visible, so I'm going to turn off the visibility there. Uh, of course, I can turn it back on in the editor so that I can continue working with it, but on page load, it will not be visible and it will be collapsed. In fact, let's preview the page so that you can see that our uh, higher list of menu options will still be evenly spaced like that. Okay, good. So now I need something to toggle the group's visibility um, on and off, in other words, open and closing it. And I'm just gonna use the text for the primary menu option itself. When we click this text, we will either hide if it's already shown or show it if it's currently hidden. So I'll start an edit workflow on menu option one text here. And the action is a single action to toggle that group. Toggling does the opposite depending on whether uh, an element is shown or hidden. So if it's hidden, it'll show it and vice versa. So we want to toggle the sub options group because that contains everything else. And now we can preview this page to see what that looks like. All right. So see how when I click it open, everything moves down. And when I click it again to toggle it off, everything else shifts back up. And the Collapsing behavior also has some animation options for you too, so you can choose to animate that uh, behavior so that it give, it's a little bit smoother if you have it sliding down and sliding up rather than jumping on and off um, or fading in and out as well. For this type of thing, a slide up and down works really, really well. That's kind of what this is meant for. And of course, where you go from here with your design is completely up to you. There's a lot of little things you can do to polish this up. For example, on the um, primary menu item, you can have it change its appearance when the sub option list for it is open. For example, when the group sub options is visible, we can um, underline the the menu option one text here so that it's a little bit more obvious like this is the open menu um, or you can change its color you can make it bold whatever you want to do to give the user a little bit more of an indication that this is the active menu and this doesn't these are all going to be independent so when you have um, a group another group for option two so if i move these down here and i will copy this and paste it Oh, it copied uh, without the background. That's interesting. Um, probably needs to just reset itself. 
I might need to refresh my page here. But this is going to be a second group, so I'm relabeling this as sub options two, and it's completely independent. So when I click on menu option one, it doesn't mean it's also going to open uh, and close the second sub option group. It's only going to work with this one element because that's all we've told it to do for this toggling action is to only toggle that group. This text here will toggle its own subgroup, uh, that being sub options two. So let's click toggle. Now we're going to select the other group here. And my background should be OK in the preview. I think my editor needs to be refreshed. Little glitch there. So menu option one and menu option two. So those are completely separate. And I will need to respace my uh, elements a little bit. But hopefully this gives you a good idea of uh, the behavior and how to make this work, too. You can also use icons to uh, trigger the toggling open and close of these subgroups. You can also design these subgroups to blend in with the master group there. We just want to change, obviously, the font color, OK, like that. And now they're a little bit more blended in together. But again, the design is completely however you want it to, to look. But that functionality is a pretty straightforward. Put all of your sub options inside a single group and then toggle that group open and closed uh, with some trigger of your choosing. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and please subscribe to the channel to get more tutorials every week. Thanks so much for watching.